Hello, I'm going to show you how you can tell in most patients which hemidiaphragm is which in the lateral chest x-ray. So why do we care? Well, just remember the x-ray beam on a frontal radiograph is coming like this. And so any lung that is below the level of that hemidiaphragm is going to be hidden. In this case, it's this big area back here. Behind that hemidiaphragm, and your only hope of seeing it is on the lateral chest radiograph. Now, if the abnormality, such as an effusion or pneumonia, abuts one of the hemidiaphragms, say like this, and obscures part of the silhouette of that hemidiaphragm's interface with the lung, the silhouette sign, see another of my videos about that, then we'll be able to tell which side the abnormality is if we can work out which side that partially obscured diaphragm is. There are four things that can be helpful to us, and sometimes all four of these we can see in any one patient, sometimes just one or two, and sometimes it's impossible to tell from the lateral chest radiograph, but there is a minority of times. So the first one is the height of the hemidiaphragm. The second is the presence or absence of large bubbles of gas within the bowel. The third, the loss of the diaphragm anteriorly, and the fourth, magnification of the hemithorax, and I go through all of these in order. There is a fifth, which is looking at the fissures, but that tends to be a lot trickier, so I've not included that in this talk. Well, let's start with the easy ones, the height. Well, if you have a patient in whom one hemidiaphragm is significantly higher than the other on the frontal radiograph, like this one, it's usually the right, but it's not always the right, then that can be really helpful to you. For example, this is going to be the right one, and this one is going to be the left one. Be a little careful, because sometimes these hemidiaphragms can kind of do hillocks like this, and that can catch you out. Gas bubbles can also be helpful. If you have a nice big gas bubble under one hemidiaphragm, but not the other, in this case it's a stomach, but it's not always a stomach, then that can be helpful. Sometimes you have colon up there under the left, or you can also have a big loop of gas-filled colon up between the liver and the hemidiaphragm on the right. So you always need to check on the frontal radiograph to make sure you know which is which. Now, in this patient, unfortunately, the heights of the hemidiaphragms on the frontal radiographs are pretty similar, so that's not going to help us, and there's no nice gas bubble to help us either. So in this patient, we're going to move to our third clue, and that is the loss of the anterior portion of a hemidiaphragm. Now remember that the heart is going to sit on the anterior portion of the left hemidiaphragm. So in many patients, not all, but in many patients, you're going to lose the anterior part of the left hemidiaphragm as there's no longer air above it um, because you've got the heart directly on top of it. So let's look at these. We have one diaphragm. This one here, which is the right one, which goes all the way anteriorly like that. And we have one hemidiaphragm here, which is the left, which just peters out when you get to the level of the heart. So the right comes the most anterior, and the left one tends to fade out at the level of the heart. I'm just magging up a little bit so you can see that. So this is going to be the right, coming all the way up here. And this is one here is going to be the left. Now the final clue on lateralization can be a little trickier, but it can still be extremely helpful on occasions. Now here is a schematic of somebody having a lateral chest x-ray. And on lateral chest x-rays, the left-hand side of the person is going to be against the x-ray uh, plate or the image receptor. The right side is going to be further away. And this uh, red over here is just representing their heart. Now as the x-ray beam comes from the x-ray generator is going to diverge and that means that the patient's right side shown here in green is going to be slightly more magnified than their left side shown here in yellow. So while the two sides are superimposed if you look at the same structures um, in this case we look at the posterior ribs on the left, they're going to look a little smaller than they are on the right. Now let's see this on a real chest x-ray. Now can you see here, if you look back into the posterior aspect of the thorax, how we have two sets of ribs here, and that this set of ribs looks a little bit smaller than this set of ribs. So as we said before, the right side is further away from the x-ray image receptor plate, and so the right side gets magnified more, so these are the right ribs and these are the left ribs. 
I'm just zooming in so you can see that a little bit better. Right side, left side. So we can follow down the posterior aspect of the thorax here on the right and we can see which diaphragm it joins, which is this one here. So that's the right one. And here's the left. And so that is the left one. Let's just unzoom and confirm that. So here's the one that we said was the right. And if you use our last clue and you follow it all the way anteriorly, it goes all the way up here. Here's the other side and it peters out at the level of the heart consistent with that being the left side. So let's try all four clues out on a normal chest X-ray. So height, well, this one's a little bit higher and a little bit higher, so that can be helpful. Gas bubble, nice stomach gas bubble under the left here. And you can see it's sitting under the left hemidiaphragm here, so that's helpful. We see one hemidiaphragm going all the way anteriorly. So that's the right, one hemidiaphragm fading out anteriorly. So that one's the left. And then our final clue, let's look to see which one goes the furthest posteriorly. One comes back here. Oh, yep, still the right. And one comes back here. And yes, that's still the left, the more anterior one. So let's try this out with a couple of trickier examples. Here's a nice example of the spine sign. Remember, the spine should get more loosened as you go down, not more opaque, in a patient with a lower lobe pneumonia. And we want to see what side it is, so we couldn't tell from the frontal radiograph. Well, what we can see here is that while this hemidiaphragm we can see nicely all the way back, this diaphragm here, we lose right about here, there's a silhouette sign in the area of the pneumonia. So we want to work out which diaphragm it is, and therefore we'll be able to tell which side the pneumonia is. Well, they're both about the same height here, so that doesn't help us. There isn't a real nice gas bubble outlining a hemidiaphragm. I can tell you that the this um, gas here wasn't very helpful on the frontal radiograph for lateralization. So we're going to come down and use uh, one of our other signs. Well, both hemidiaphragms come kind of a long way anteriorly, so that doesn't help us in this patient like it often does. So now let's come down to our fourth clue, the magnification of the hemithoraces. So let's look at the largest hemithorax, which is this one, the most posterior one. And you can see that this hemidiaphragm comes all the way down and all the way back to meet that. I'll take, wipe that out in a minute so you can see it. So we know that that diaphragm isn't a pacified, it's the other one. And we know the one that comes the most posteriorly is the right one. So therefore, this is the left hemidiaphragm and this is a left lower lobe pneumonia. And I'll just zoom up there so that you can see that a little bit more magnified and see again that this hemidiaphragm goes all the way back. So that's the right. This one we've lost, so that's the left. And just one final example, this is a patient who has small bilateral pleural effusions that are only visible on the lateral chest x-ray. You can see them here, little curvy linear opacities. Now, these are pretty obvious, they're bilateral, but perhaps, we, perhaps one has got bigger and the other one hasn't. We want to know what side each of these is. Well, again here, the height of the diaphragms is very similar. Well, we do have a gas bubble here. I'm not entirely sure which hemidiaphragm is under, and the patient's also got a hiatal hernia, so that makes it more confusing. So we're going to use our other clues. Here's one pleural effusion and one hemidiaphragm that fades out, so that is going to be the left one. And this pleural effusion with this hemidiaphragm that goes further anterior is going to be the right one. And then, just as a double check, Remember, the magnified ribs are the more posterior one. This one is here, so that's the right one. The more anterior, less magnified ribs are going to be the left one, so we see the same thing. Okay, practice this on every chest x-ray you see, and you'll soon get the hang of it, and I would guarantee you that at least, well, I don't know, maybe 99 out of 100, maybe not quite that many, chest x-rays, you'll be able to tell which diaphragm is which.